Welcome back to the latest episode of the Key and Mang Audio Experience. I'm your host, Mang, as always, and my fellow co-host, Key. Key, what's good? What's up, Mang? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm lovely. I'm good. I love it. Have a good Christmas? Yes, it was good. I had to make up for Thanksgiving because on Thanksgiving, I didn't have the food I really wanted. So mm-hmm. yesterday, I had to eat for two holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that's, that's good, the way that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Yeah, we had um, our plans change a little bit. So we had some impromptu dinner plans, but it all it all turned out really good. That's good. I, I wonder what Alaska is like on Christmas. Like I picture like Rudolph and Prancer coming up to your front door <laughs> on a <the> sled. <laughs> uh, yeah, rolling through on, on the roof. So they don't put that. <laughs> they, uh, yeah. You know, you got to go up to the North Pole, though. We're not too far from the North Pole, so, you know. Yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's how I picture it. That's how I picture it. Yeah, you, you could come experience it. You could come see for yourself. Maybe you'll see Santa. I told you I will not pull up to Alaska in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's, it's, not, it's not horrible. You got to bundle up. Wear lots of jackets. Mm. All right. I don't know. <laughs> we just talked about it being the end of, uh, day after Christmas, um, but we're still in the, resp- in the reflective spirit. Um, taking the time to sit down and look back at what big milestones we were able to accomplish, um, what areas you developed in, or did things are the same, and do you want the opportunity to have the next year be better than the last? So uh, I think it starts with looking back in the past, and that's what we're going to do today. So Key, can you take us through your year in review, your 2022 in review? Okay, I want to start with creating the podcast. I know that was in March, but I feel like I was pretty much in going through the motions from January to March. Um, we were getting like the podcast ready and stuff, but outside of that, I felt like my January to March of 2022 was just an extension of my 2021. I feel like I didn't get the ball rolling until like this podcast. So I think the podcast helped me with consistency in other areas too. Like it kind of helped me slow down because you know me, I'd be out on the weekends, and I think with the podcast, it allowed me to have an actual reason to cancel plans and, like, stay inside, and then it forced me to be, like, more thoughtful and, um, like, reflective more consistently so that I could actually come on the podcast and not sound like a complete imbecile, um, so <laughs> it allowed me to um, really slow down and, like, be thoughtful about things, so... I think that was cool. And then we were just talking about how we're eight episodes away from um, doing a whole year. So I think that was that was pretty dope starting the podcast. And we also got like a lot of traction. Like it's been growing like crazy. I think once we hit the 1K place, it just took off. Like we hit 1.5 really quick. We were like 1.8 now. And that was like a month and a half ago. So that was dope. Um, also following that, I hit 1K month in my business for like five months. So that was dope because I felt like I was struggling to get to that point. And I did it with only having one person in person. Um, I had somebody in Cali, somebody in Texas and Louisiana. So that was dope. And then I created a course. These are not in chronological order. I feel like I released my course recently. I created my course, Lifting for Women, a Beginner's Guide. And... I was thinking differently with that one because I've been wanting to create a course since physical therapy school. And I always just put it off because I felt like I wasn't ready to put out everything that people wanted. Like I would um, ask people questions like, what do you want to see in this course? And they would hit me with so much information. And I felt like I didn't have the time to put everything in there. So that prevented me from doing it. This time around in 2022, I was um, thinking that I was under the mindset that it doesn't have to be perfect. And because it's an online product, I could always add to it. I just need to get it out there. So I really just took the time, gave myself a deadline and got it out there. And that was like the best decision I could have made because yes, I do like online training. It's not in person, but at some point you do have to scale and you do have to figure out ways that you could be more accessible to more people. And I think the online product is a great way to come into my world without having to pay like the full one-on-one coaching price and you're still able to get a lot out of it. And recently, so within the last six weeks, I sold seven courses and that made me 
be like, I already think this is a steal for this price. I had it at one fifty, and like people were buying it, and I think one hundred fifty dollars at one hundred fifty dollars is a complete steal. So I increased my prices of that. Um, so let's see how many I sell now, but I've gotten a lot of good feedback about that. So that's something I'm very proud of. Next, um, I had a Facebook group. I think since physical therapy school, but I didn't put much attention to it. I changed the name like three, four times. Um, this year, I finally niched down and decided to work with women only. And that was probably like one of the most important decisions I made because I was able to actually figure out exactly who I want to help and not like spread myself too thin. And from January to April, I was stuck at 170 people because I wasn't really putting much effort into the group. I wasn't promoting it. I wasn't putting content in there. So it was pretty much a standstill. Now, today, I have 369 people. So I was able to grow my group by almost 200 people, 199 people from April to now. And that's because I've really just been focusing all my attention to there, like all of my Instagram, my Twitter, my Facebook, all goes back to my um, community. And I've been getting a lot of good feedback about that as well. People have been joining it without me having to really promote it. So that's been really dope. You want me to keep going? Okay. <laughs> um, then in October, I hit one year at my job. And I think I was having like a negative mindset about my job because I don't really have control over who I work with and like the times I work and stuff like that. But I've been trying to have a better perspective and mindset when it comes to work so that it doesn't feel as dreadful and it actually has been a good experience even though I talk a lot of shit and it's been a good experience because um, I've gotten better at treating like post-surgical cases I've been exposed to a lot of um, diagnoses that I wouldn't have seen elsewhere just because of where I work and like the population um, we deal with like a lot of athletes so I think that has been great. I think my communication has gotten better when it comes to communicating with uh, patients and explaining different things, talking to different healthcare providers, which also benefits me in my uh, business because a lot of people that I talk to on the internet, they do have, they have had certain procedures done and they want to know that you are familiar with it, you're competent with treating that and, um, not just somebody that's like teaching you how to lift without having that experience. So that has been very beneficial. So when I changed my mindset to thinking it, thinking about it in that way and how it's going to benefit me and my business, work has been more tolerable. Um, and then my coworkers are pretty cool. So I do enjoy them. Um, I turned 26 on November 26th and May made me feel mad old. <laughs> um, that was a good time to reflect and think back on everything I learned over 26 years. Um, and kind of put the next four years in perspective because I think when um I think when I'm in my thirties, I gotta have my shit really together. Um, so <laughs> that kind of that kind of motivated me. And then also this year I started budgeting because when I switched jobs, I started spending a lot more money just making stupid decisions. I think budgeting has allowed me to reflect on what I am spending, seeing where my money is going and make better decisions. I still make impulsive decisions and still spend more money than I should on like eating out and going out, stuff like that. But I think I think that I've gotten a lot better. And I also think that I'm probably never gonna be the type to, to like completely not spend money out. But if I can control it and um, just be more conscious about it or cognizant about it, um, I think I'll be, be in a better position financially. But I have come to the conclusion that I'm never going to be that type of person that's like, oh, I'm never buying Starbucks. No, that's not me. But <laughs> I am making better decisions. That's my year in review. Well, there it is. It's part of the it's part of the growth process. One, I got one question, I got a statement. I'll start with the statement first. Um, you said from January to March, you felt like you were kind of at a standstill and things started to pop off come March. Um, I feel like it's easy to lock it into the details of like getting very tunnel vision and not taking a broader look. You just listed off a whole bunch of things like building your Facebook group, releasing 44 episodes on a podcast, multiple 1K months. And that happened in nine months. But she was like, I focus, focusing on that first three months, it felt like it was kind of still. I think one, 
Um, I'm proud of you. Like, I think that's big, all the stuff that you accomplished in the last year. And two, I think you accomplished, even if it was now, I think those first three months were helping you lead up to the, the rest of the nine months that she was able to, what she was able to accomplish. So wanted to give you kudos for that. And then if you had to boil it down to one lesson, your biggest lesson in 2022, what would you say? Stop trying to focus on too many things, focus on the main thing. And I think the main thing for me was, at least for my business, was like focusing on exactly who you want to help and stop trying to make things like more difficult. I was trying to do too many things at once. I think once I started focusing on my community, I think that made everything else take off. And thank you for being proud of me. Yeah, of course, of course. And what do, what else? I wanted to say something else. All right, whatever. Go ahead. What, what are you going to say? Don't come back. <laughs> uh, uh, my 2022 review. Uh, I think mine starts off in January. Graduated from PT school and passing boards because December last year, this time last year, I had six weeks to study and I was freaking out because I was like, I just screwed up my whole clinical experience by not studying during clinicals. But six weeks got it done and and graduated PT school and so I think that kind of launched everything with like building your confidence of not having to study for boards again and not having to wait on three months of potential income for for um you know getting things started so I think that was probably the biggest thing in, in January and then we had already started recording um episodes for Key and Meng and like you mentioned we we launched it in March and that was a little that was crazy I was like, I, I had launched um I had launched with AJ and Damien like a podcast over the summer of 2020 after um and people, when we were all in lockdown. So uh, doing it again, I don't I don't think I was that nervous about it because I was like, I already done this once, but this is just a whole different direction that we was taking it. So I was like, we, I was interested to see where it was gonna go and to now look back and be like, we're 44 episodes in, 45 episodes in. And the wealth of, or the variety of topics and things that we've discussed, it was like, wow, I didn't know it was going to turn into this. And kind of excited to see what it's going to turn into in the next year, two years, three years. Um, so then moving on to, had graduation in May, had my family come out to Boston for the first time, which is really cool because I hadn't seen them too much and going to celebrate with them. And it was a, it was a big deal for for them and being able to celebrate with them, I think was was really cool. Something that you don't you don't forget, you don't take for granted. Because I don't I didn't get to see my family a lot during PT school because it's just so far. So having that opportunity to have everybody in one spot, um, and and all the messages was was really nice to, for me to be like, yeah, I, I I did something that that probably probably the first in my family, and I think it helped open the doors for the people coming after me. So hopefully, um, take a look. I I. I I take it with it's a big responsibility that I had, but finishing up. But I think it opened up a lot of doors for like my little cousins and my little brother and my little siblings that are like watching me and understand that I chose the path that I wanted to take because in, in our family it's doctor, engineer, lawyer. That's what you're told because those are like seeing successful. So I picked my own path and kind of blazed my own trail, and hopefully it it, it inspires people in my family and throughout to to do the same thing like you don't gotta if you feel like it's not right for you then don't do it but find what you're passionate about make sure you can feed yourself and take care of yourself and then make make moves um and then i moved back home in june and i i didn't think it was gonna happen if you asked me when i first started pd school i said no nah, i'm not i'm not leaving i'm not coming back to alaska these winters are the reason why zero degrees negative 10 four feet of snow in a week like nah I I, I said I'll never do it again and then look here I am again but that was because I knew that I wanted to stack my bread and make the save as much as possible for when I was going to leave I, I I said when I came back I have a limited timeline I'm going to make as much as possible and try and just prepare myself for the be set for the move when that comes through so what I did was <laughs> you start making more money, you buy a car, you buy, you start to splurge on some big things. So that was my first, my first big purchase. Um uh I knew I I knew I needed it and I wasn't 
I, I wasn't going to buy something like brand new, but I knew I needed something that was dependable and that I could have that could get me through the winter times, but also was something that um kind of learn about budgeting and financing. And all right, now I got a car note. Now I got insurance. Now I got to take that into account into my monthly expenses. So it kind of just helped me get organized with my finances, but also not, um you know, people might be like, you know, you should spend less on a car and save up as much as you can. But living in Alaska, you know, circumstances are a little different. You got to find something dependable. Can't have your car stranded out in the middle of the street because it's a death sentence out here, especially now in the winter time. So I wanted something dependable, wanted something, um, something good. And that was my first like big purchase. And I was like, oh, all right, now we're making some big moves. And then around that time, like I had started, like it was like a month into work and I started investing in different PT courses, whether it's Andy Chen's Moment Mentorship, uh, Performance Redefined with um, Brian LaRitchie or, or the 180 system with uh, Rhett Polka. Um, just different uh, PT minds out there trying to get better at analyzing movement and prescribing interventions. So I want to be able, I wanted to, I, went into all that stuff because I wanted to use it for um the future when I like drop like different content or it's basketball related stuff I bought those things to help prepare me for the future and what I um what I plan how I plan on evolving as a therapist and helping the the basketball community so then um I also got a, a trainer uh Jeremiah if you didn't hear episode 25 go peep that one but um Jeremiah, I've known Jeremiah since we were kids and now um he uh I was like, bro, I wanna dunk, I wanna um be more athletic. I'm getting older, so um I need to I wanna I can still do my thing though. Stop laughing. Like I'm I'm nice with it. Stop laughing. So I, I still wanted to make sure that I was investing in my health and practicing what I preach to my patients and how I'll be like it's important to move throughout the day. I want to do the same thing, take care of my health, take care of my of my mind so that I'm ready to to go at all times. So then um, I think that's just helped me with like now I'm in a basketball league and I've been feeling like playing really good. But I think it's just because of the consistency of the stuff that we did over the summer, um, getting a routine down, addressing my weaknesses. Um, still not dunking yet, but it's close. It, it'll, it'll get there. I promise. I promise it'll get there. And then I think my last thing is um, now it's been uh, six months on my job and I realized that uh, I don't know if you if you guys talked about this in your like communication courses, but um, reflection in action, reflection like after the fact or reflection, like stuff like that. I forgot what the names are, but I realized that as I'm giving people like what I think is going on and how we're going to address it, when I say something that's like... Um, not how I want it to be, or it doesn't come across how I want it to be. Um, I have gotten a lot better at correcting that and being like, that wasn't the message that I wanted to give across. Um, so we're going to try this again. And I've gotten a lot better at recognizing when somebody like is lost and does not understand and when they're on board and when they understand. So I think just as I've gotten to talk to more people and get to work with more people that the communication aspect has gotten a lot better and how I'm thinking about things is also improved but I think that just comes with experience and getting your feet wet and kind of being put into the fire and having to figure out a way to 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 get out of it so that was my my year in review shout out to you that was a lot I always forget that you graduated in January I feel like I always feel like you graduated with me <laughs> um yeah. but no, I want to say that obviously I'm proud of you, but I am, I really admire how like you plan things out and your mind is like, I don't know, it may not feel like this, but it comes across as your mind is organized. And I think that like communicating with you so much has, I'm not that organized, but it has made me want to be more organized and thoughtful. So um, I like that. That's been helping me. Um, I admire that. Um, When you said that, you completing PT school might have opened doors for people like in your family or like people that know you. I don't think it, I don't think it has to be somebody following you in physical therapy. I think when you see 
somebody you know accomplish something big like that that just opens doors in general like it could be accomplishing like something like that in finance or business or anything I think that you just need to see somebody doing something at a high level and it and it um kind of inspires you so I definitely think that somebody in your family is inspired by that whether or not they have an interest in physical therapy and then in regards to the courses I think that like I bought a lot of courses too but I stopped doing it because I don't ever finish them um, I think with you, like I said, you're very planned out. So you'll like outline what you're going to go over that day. So I stopped buying courses, but I do, like I said, admire how you plan that out. So that's pretty dope. Congrats. I appreciate I appreciate it. I think to the to your first point, I, I was just, I was just thinking of the fact that like in my in my I don't know, culture, family, I guess, like there's a lot of comparison going on and like I'm one of the oldest, which is kind of crazy. Like I, I'm one of the oldest. Like my sister is older than me, but I'm I'm next. So I was like, sheesh. But a lot of people now that I've finished up, they like to compare their kids to me, and I'm like, yo, no. Like I, if I hear it, I, I squash that because I'm like, look, that's what was best for me. Um, I think we gotta empower the next generation to to chase what they want to go after, but make sure that they can still survive and, and thrive in the decisions that they make. Um, and not us pushing down a field to um for them to go after because it's it's safe. Maybe they might be a good doctor. They might not <laughs> if you force them down a the field that so I, I think it, it's just about I was just trying to get out the I'm trying to inspire people to be independent and and make the best decision for themselves and and what they feel like they're meant to accomplish in this in this time but thank you but thank you though i appreciate i appreciate the thoughts on me feeling organized i feel like i just like to to plan for the for the best and and worst case scenario but i feel like when i buy stuff there has to be a a reason why i I bought it because i i mean I, i think when you buy when I when I I used to because I was in the same boat I bought like 10 15 courses and I wasn't using them and I was like well this is stupid this is a waste of this is a waste of money so now I'm like all right if this stuff is available I, I take some time on like Sundays and I'll be like all right this week I'm gonna get this video done I'm gonna get this video done and I try to break it down to smaller pieces and and understand the the big picture because I was tired of missing like live calls and and all that stuff to go over the concepts of that week. So I was like, the courses I buy now, I'm gonna make sure I can attend calls because I have to like start applying stuff. I can't just keep consuming, consuming, consuming and not applying stuff. So that's kind of gone into the thought process of how I go about buying courses now. Cause now all the stuff I'm buying, I'm trying to spend a lot of time on and actually figure out how I can use in clinic and whether it's content or communication, whatever it may be. So. I appreciate it, though. You're welcome. I think for both of us, the next year is going to be very pivotal. I know you're already old, but it's my golden year. But <laughs> I think it's going to be very pivotal with um the things like we already have going on and then our goals, which we'll cover in another episode. But I think that like next year is going to be good years for both of us. And I'm excited to see like what the year holds and what we both accomplish. So that when we do this next year, we can like have a long list of even like bigger things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think it just lays the lays the groundwork for for what's to come. But I think taking time to to look back on what you what happened the last year, so that you can figure out, give yourself props one for because sometimes we get so focused in that we don't congratulate ourselves or celebrate our the ones that we had. So I think taking the time to to look back and, and be like, yeah, I really did that. I did this. I did this. I said I was going to do this. I accomplished this. I got cl- close to this, but still got a little bit to go. Then you can just use that to build the momentum to for the upcoming year. Yep. Also, if you're listening to this, I want you guys to comment below, whether it's a review or if you're seeing this on a clip on Instagram or TikTok, comment what was good for you this year and what was like some home runs for you and what you want to accomplish in the following year so that you guys could also take the time to reflect on things. Y'all heard the lady. 
and we'll catch you on the next episode of the Key and Mang Audio Experience.